another yoga mode flow practice. Yoga mode flow is a mobility inspired yoga practice. My name's Heather, I'm the creator of yoga mode flow. This is a 40 to 45 minute practice. So I invite you to come down on your mat. You don't need any equipment for this other than your mat. And you never need any equipment ever for a yoga mode flow sequence. We're going to start on our backs, so I encourage you to come lie down on your mat, however you want to get there. You can have your knees bent, and just take a few minutes to arrive here on your mat. You can gently close your eyes, take some deep breaths. If you like, you can place one hand on your belly, another over your heart. And just feel the rise and fall of your belly and chest as you take a few deep breaths. The hard part's done. You've arrived on your mat. You're committed to your practice. And I'm glad you're here. One more deep breath. And then from now on, try to keep your lips sealed and breathe in and out through your nose for the remainder of the practice if you can. We are going to be working. Go ahead and drop your Knees to the right and then to the left. We're going to windshield wiper our knees to start. And during this practice, we are going to focus on strength, flexibility, mobility, and we're also going to get our heart rate up. So here, we're just going back and forth. You can keep your hands where they are. If they feel more comfortable, you can put them by your side. It's up to you. On this next one to the right, let's just pause. Get a little stretch here. Come up through center, go to the left, pause. And come back through center. Let's lengthen our legs out. And then go ahead and pull that right knee into the chest, imagining that you're trying to pull it to your right shoulder. It's not going to get there, but just using that as a as an indicator of where it should be going. And then let's go ahead and just circle, make little circles with our knee going one direction. Then pause, and then go ahead and go in the other direction. Go ahead and give it one last little squeeze. Then release the right leg back to the mat. Let's do the same thing on the other side, drawing the left knee into the chest, holding it here for a minute. And then let's make some circles in one direction. Just getting your joints lubricated and loosened. And then let's pause and go the opposite direction with the knee. And then stopping the circles and giving one last squeeze, drawing the knee towards the shoulder and releasing. From here, we're gonna take our feet up to the sky and we're going to put our wrists under our bums, and we're going to start by turning on our core with a little bit of ab work. From here, we're just going to lower our feet to the as close as we can get to the floor, thinking about not lifting up the lower back. If your lower back lifts up, you've gone too deep. If it's easier for you, a modification is you can 
um, have your knees bent. But we're going to lift and lower 10 times. So 10, 9, Halfway done, that's five, four, three, two. And on one, we're going to stay down, coming into our low boat, pausing here. Let's take our hands over our head and just do some kicks for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, hugging the knees into the chest. Bring the knees in. You can rock a little bit side to side. Release that lower back. And from here, we're going to rock ourselves up and down as a little mobility drill. We're going to do it eight times. So you can either hold on to the outside of your knees or behind your hamstrings. And we're going to rock up and down. That's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the last one, we're going to stay up. Coming to the center of our mat in our cross-legged seat, we're going to stretch out our hips a little bit more. I've got my left foot in front of my right. And we're going to reach out and up. And we're going to do that six times. So coming down as far as you can. We're just moving. We're stretching out. This is number six. Let's hold down. You may just be on your forearms. That's fine. Or you may even be up here. That's okay. We're just stretching out that right hip. Trying to keep our sits bones planted and just stretching it here. Then go ahead and walk your hands back and we're going to do some side body stretches six times going back and forth right to left. So there's one. Try to get your elbow down if you can. If you're up here, that's perfectly fine. We're just going for sensation in the side body. These are the last two. Well done. From here, we're just going to do a little twist. So let's take our right hand on our left knee, left hand behind us, lengthening up through the spine, turning and looking over that left shoulder, inhaling, lengthening the spine, exhaling, a little bit deeper twist. Then go ahead and come back to center and let's switch out the cross of our legs. So now our right foot is in front and we're going to go down and up. Here we go. Six times. Here's our last one. We're going to hold. Hold wherever it's comfortable for you. Again, trying to keep those sits bones planted. You can go ahead and walk yourself on up. And let's do those side body stretches again for six. Plus two. From here, taking a twist on the other side, so taking our left hand to our right knee, bringing the right hand behind us, twisting to the side, looking out over that right shoulder, inhaling, exhaling, lengthening the spine, and then twisting on the exhale a little bit deeper. And release. From here, we're going to do another mobility drill, leg strengthener. 
Um, I do this in almost every episode, some version of this, in every practice, and um, it's getting off the floor without using your hands. Such an important skill to have, especially as we get older, and I'm thinking about that. I'm 45, so I'm thinking about my independence and my longevity. We're going to start with our right leg in front and this cross-legged seat, and we're going to alternate six times going up and then coming back down without using our hands. If you have to use your hands to, to get you up, that's perfectly fine. We're just working towards being handless. So here we have one, and back, whoa, back down. Sometimes we, we fall, and that's okay. That's part of it. We're just seeing what our body's doing. Here's four. And on this last one, we're going to stay standing up and head to the top of our mat. Just me clothing, whatever you need. We're going to take our hands overhead. Go ahead and grab the left wrist with the right hand and lean over to the right. Get inside body stretch here. And coming back to center, grabbing the right wrist with the left hand and then leaning over to the left. From here back to center, let's dive forward into our forward fold. Pedaling out the legs, it's our first little stretch here. Go ahead and lift halfway, flattening out the back. If you need, you can put your hands on your shins, lengthening through the spine and the neck. And then go ahead and step it back into your plank. Pause here for just a minute. You can kind of rock back and forth, stretching out through the wrists and the feet. And then when you're ready, lift your hips up into your downward facing dog. It's our first dog, so go ahead and walk your dog. Pedal it out, stretching through the calves and the hamstrings. Looking at the placement of your hands, making sure your fingers are nice and wide, and that you're not kind of dumping all your weight into your wrists. Pushing your chest back towards your quadriceps, and then just hold for a moment. Deep breaths. From here, take your left foot to the center of your mat and raise your right leg. So now you're in your three-legged dog. You're going to go ahead and step that right foot between your hands into your runner's lunge and just rock it out here for a minute. From here, let's plant that back foot at a 45 degree angle, and then go ahead and cartwheel your arms up for a warrior two. Taking care to look at your front um, foot, making sure that you can see your big toe and ideally maybe the toe next to it, um, just to make sure that we're in alignment and keeping our knees protected. From here, let's flip the right Palm up and reverse your warrior, reaching back. From here, we're coming down into a side angle pose. You can rest your forearm, forearm on your right knee, or if you like, you can come all the way down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to flow through that reverse warrior into our sink angle. So inhale, reverse. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, reverse. Twice more at your own pace, your own breath. Last one. Coming back to our warrior two. Go ahead and place the hands on the hip. Take that right foot. Turn it in, 
we're coming into our wide-legged forward fold. So have your hands here, keep your back nice and flat, and forward fold. Come on down. From here, you can just take your wide-legged forward fold. That feels good. If you like, you can grab onto your the outside edges of your feet and bend your elbows and pull yourself in, just getting a nice stretch through the hamstrings. And go ahead and come on up to your flat back and we're going to do a spider lunge to the left. So coming onto the left toes, stretching out through that right groin, Pausing here for a minute, you can take maybe one hand to the heart, maybe two, a little balance challenge. And then we're gonna do six spider lunges back and forth. So you can use your hands coming down to help you out. You might hear some snap, crackle pops through your knees or feet, stretching out our ankles. One more to the back. And then go ahead and come back into your runner's lunge at the top of your mat. Go ahead and step back into plank and go through a vinyasa. If it's more comfortable for you, you could have your knees down into a, um, a baby cobra. Otherwise, we're going to do chaturanga into upward facing dog. Back to your down dog. Pausing it out here. Take some breaths. We're gonna do everything on the opposite side, so go ahead and lift. Take your right foot to the center of your mat and lift your, your left leg to the sky. Then go ahead and step it through into your runner's lunge. You can wrap it out here for a second. And then go ahead and plant the right foot, the back foot at a 45 degree angle, and come on up into your warrior two. Once again, checking to make sure the knee is over the ankle and you can see your big toes. Gazing out over the front arm. Go ahead and flip that left palm, come back into your reverse warrior. And then coming down, resting on your forearm, forearm, coming into your side angle, or you can come all the way down to the floor. And we're going to flow that like we did on the other side. So matching your inhale, exhale, breath to movement. Three more times at your pace. Really taking our time to go to the end of that stretch. And then all the way back up into your warrior two. Coming into your forward fold, go ahead and bend the left foot in, turn it in, hands on the hips, and come on down. Hi there. From here, if you like, you can clasp the hands behind the back and get a little bit more of a shoulder stretch here. That feels good for you. If not, you can do the same variation you did on the other side. From here, release the hands down without slingshotting them. Do a halfway lift. And then we're going to spider lunge to the back of our mat. Stretching out that left groin. If you want that balance challenge, maybe one hand to the heart. Ooh, maybe two. Maybe that's not happening for me today. And then we're going to go back and forth with our spider lunges. Here's our last one. 
and then back to our runner's lunge at the front of our mat. And step back into your plank. Then go ahead and do your vinyasa. We all meet in downward facing dog. Pause here. Take some deep breaths. Our next little mini flow has some pretty cool transitions. I think you'll like it. It's going to be fun. Go ahead and take that left foot to the center of your mat, lifting your right leg up. Take a second to bend the right knee, opening the hip, looking under that right armpit. You can take some circles if you want, or just point and flex your foot, whatever feels good. Then go ahead and come back into that three-legged dog, and we're going to do knee to nose six times. So one, two, three, four, five. Last one. Back to your three-legged dog. We're going to drop our right knee off, or right foot off to the side, stretching out the left leg, coming into our wild thing. Lifting that right arm above our heads. From here, another little fun transition back through plank into our right side plank. Pause here. From here, a fun little balance challenge. We're going to bring up the inside right leg. See if you can hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Drop it down, lift the hips, starfish. And slowly lower yourself onto your mat. From here, you're in your straddle hold. Go ahead and walk it out. If you're up on your hands, that's fine. Just go to where it feels good for you. Trying to keep your feet active just to protect your knees. Keeping your feet bright helps to protect the knee joint. We're just going to hold it here. You can sway a little side to side if you don't want to be static. Sometimes that feels good. And then walk yourself back up. We're going to take our right hand behind us, taking our left hand to our heart, and we're going to lift and lower four times. So here we go. We've got one, two, three, four. Then back up and coming back to a plank, going through your vinyasa, all of us meeting in down dog. Resting here for just a second before we do that on the opposite side. Go ahead and take the right foot to the center of your mat, lifting the left leg to the sky. Go ahead and bend the left knee, opening up the hip. And then squaring it off into your three-legged dog. Coming into those knee-to-nose six times. So here we go. Here's the last one. Holding it back up in your three-legged dog and flipping it over into your wild thing. Doing that little fun transition here through plank into our left side plank. Pausing for just a second, then taking that inside left leg, stretching it forward for five, four, see if you can hold it up, three, two, 
One, releasing it down, lifting the hips for starfish. And slowly setting yourself down on your mat. Once again, you're in a straddle. Go ahead and walk it on out. Holding here, keeping those feet bright to protect your knees. So coming back out of our straddle, taking our left hand behind us, right palm to the heart, lifting and lowering four times. So one, two, three, and four. Coming back up and finding our plank pose and going through a vinyasa. Meeting in our downward dog. Pausing for just a second, taking a few deep breaths. We're gonna do a fun little mobility move. I call them hop throughs. I don't know if they have a real name. Um, and I'll show you what it's gonna look like and then I'll show you the modification. So we just step our right foot outside our right hand bringing our left arm back, passing the left leg through, and then coming back into a down dog. You're welcome to go slow like that. You can hop it a little bit more. A modification is just to walk your feet back and in. Otherwise, slow one from this side, left hand, or left foot outside the left hand, and pulling back, right leg through, Back to your downward facing dog. We're gonna do four on each side. So do, go ahead and do them at your own pace. One more set. Once you're back and down dog, go ahead and drop your knees to a child's pose. Resting your head on your mat, taking some deep breaths. I told you you would get your heart rate up. <laughs> that surely did. And just pausing. Then let's raise ourselves up into a tabletop. We've got one more mobility drill. This is for the lower body and the ankles. We're gonna curl our toes under lift ourselves up and come back into a narrow yogi squat. This does take some ankle mobility. If you're not quite there, that's okay, you'll get there. What we're gonna do is come up to our knees and back down into this position six times. So coming forward, one, two, halfway there, Last one. And then go ahead and take a seat. Coming back into the center of your mat. You can keep your legs out long. Here you can be pretty sloppy with your upper body. There's no need to hold yourself perfectly straight. And we're gonna do some toe work. Um, so we're gonna flex our feet and do like a half point with your toes facing your face and then a full point 
Then isolate the toes again, back to a flex. Nine more times. In yoga MoFlo, we try to work the total body. So that means every single joint in your body. Toes, fingers, everything. If you don't use it, you lose it, and we don't want to lose it. One more. Very good. Now we're just going to point and flex ten times. Twice more. That's one. Very good. From here, we're going to do a quad strengthener. Um, again, you can be sloppy in your upper body. You don't need to be holding yourself perfectly straight. Um, what we're going to do here as a modification, you can just lift and lower um, the leg six times. In other words, we're actually, or, or the rest of us, we're going to write out the word MOFLO. So M-O-F-L-O, -O, capital letters, six times. So M-O, not six times, three times. F-L-O, M-O-F. L. Oh, you're feeling it in your quad. M. O. F. L. O. Go ahead and release it down. Shake it out. We're going to do the same thing on the left side. So M. O. F. L. O. M. O. F. L. O, M, O, F, L, O, release, shake it out. Now let's get good posture. Go ahead and raise yourself up into your staff pose. Arms reach overhead and let's forward fold. Come down as low as you can, grab onto whatever you can and pull yourself down. You can even sway a little bit side to side here if that feels good for you. Just getting a nice stretch. From here, go ahead and walk your hands on up. And we're going to windshield wiper our legs like we did at the beginning. So having our knees bent, we're going to take them to the left and then to the right. Trying to kind of come over our hips a little bit, feeling it more in our hip joint. The next time we come to our right side, we're going to pause. Here we are on our right side, bringing this left Foot flat on the mat behind you. I apologize for not looking at you, but we're going to hold here and stretch out our quad. Some of you will feel it just like this. Some of you may have to walk your hands back. Some of us may need to come down on our elbows. Just feeling it through that quadricep and having a nice stretch. Go ahead and push yourself back up, taking that windshield wiper to the left. Once again, taking that right foot flat behind you and walking it out. You might find that one side feels different from the other. That's very normal. We're not perfectly symmetrical. But feeling a good stretch through that quad. It's really good to lengthen our quads, not have them so tight, so this lengthening is really good. It helps your muscles function a lot better if they're lengthened. And go ahead and walk yourself up. From here, kind of scooting back into the middle of the mat, we're going to keep our left foot just as it is. We're coming into a fire log or a double pigeon pose, crossing the right foot on top. I know a lot of people have very tight hips and may not be able to get into the shape and that's okay. If your knee is up here, you can put a bolster or a pillow, something like that in there um, 
to be able to achieve the shape and feel the stretch. Um, again, trying to keep those feet bright. You may feel it just like this. If so, that's great. Stay here, feeling it in that right hip. Um, if you need a little more, you can come on down to your elbows. And we're just gonna hold here, resting in our forearms. We go ahead and walk it on up, and let's just go to the opposite side. Switching it out, right leg on the bottom, left on top, adjusting as you need, taking whatever variation you need, and coming on down if that works for you. Now you should feel a deep stretch through that left hip. <laughs> And go ahead and walk it on up. From here, we're going to take our feet flat to the floor, and I'm just going to turn to the side so you can see what's going on with my back. Keeping my back nice and straight, um, and we're just going to reach our hands up six times, trying to get our biceps by our ears, and this is just a little back strengthener. So one, two, three, four, five, last one, and six. Then go ahead and take those arms out in front of you and slowly lower onto your back. From here, let's plant our left foot on the floor, bringing the right knee into our chest and lengthening that leg out. Grab wherever you can get a hold of. Might be behind the hamstring. Try not to grab behind the knee. Could be the calf or the ankle. We're just gonna stretch it out here and we're gonna flex and point our foot. All the hard stuff is done now. We're just stretching. And go ahead and pause here. You might wanna make some letter U's with your toe. Trying to not to be static, stretching out the hamstrings. And then just one little pull. Then go ahead and lengthen that right leg down, bending the left knee and coming across the body into a side stretch, a twist. Looking out over that right shoulder and just pausing here. We're just wringing out our spine. Release, come back to center. Let's do that on the opposite side. So bringing that left foot in, grabbing where you can, and point and flex the toes. And let's go ahead and make those little U's with our toes. Our smiley face me not being static. Giving one last squeeze, lengthening out the right leg, bending the left knee, and take it across the body, looking out over the left shoulder. And go ahead and release. Let's come back to center. Let's go ahead and bring both knees into the chest, raising the head off the ground, seeing if you can grab opposite elbows, and seeing if you can bring your forehead to your knees. Kind of just curling up in a little ball, giving everything a big giant squeeze, keeping a deep breath, releasing, and then release everything. Go ahead and take your feet flat on your mat, dropping, dropping your knees wide into a cobbler's pose. 
You can do that same hand variation like we did at the beginning with your right hand on your belly, your left over your heart. And just pausing here for a minute. Feeling the rise and fall of the chest and the belly. If this feels good for you, you can stay here for your Shavasana. If you want more traditional, go ahead and take one leg out, then the other, letting your feet flop open, taking your hands out to your side, palms up, and relax. We're only going to be here for a minute or two. I encourage you not to skip this. This is where you take all the good that you've done in your practice and assimilate it into your tissues, in your body. Also, just feel the earth supporting you and relax. It's all good. And let's go ahead and bring some movement back into the body. You can wiggle your fingers and toes. Turn your head from side to side. Do one last good morning stretch. Stretching the arms overhead, stretching out through the legs, stretching out through the total spine and the belly. And then releasing, rolling to one side in your fetal position, pausing here for just a second. And then using the strength of your arms to push you back up to a seat, whatever's comfortable for you. Pausing here for just a minute, closing your eyes, maybe noticing how your body feels different now than the start of class. Noticing what's changed. Perhaps you feel a little bit more length through the spine, a little bit more open. Hopefully ready to face your day or whatever evening plans you have in store for you. Then opening the eyes, hands to heart, bowing the head. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for this Yoga MoFlo class. I invite you to leave comments below or suggestions you might have for me um, and also to hit the subscribe button so that way you don't miss out on a single yoga mofo practice that comes your way. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.